Well, I'm not sure where it goes, but it goes somewhere, right? Well, hello and welcome back to the Bikepacking Dad's YouTube channel. Episode 9, just like that, September. Again, going to be visiting a castle, so early shout out to Historic Scotland for making it happen. We are going to the coast, people. Um, the weather just now, it's not too bad. It's overcast, it's not as warm as it has been by any means, but the main thing, it's not raining. Last month's episode, check it out. It was very wet. It's about 50 miles out and about 60 miles back in tomorrow. I've got a few off-road sections, as always, because I want to go out and explore some of the places that people might not go on their bikes. But for now, time to get the head down. Let's get on the road. Tantallon Castle, it's definitely going to be quieter than Edinburgh Castle. It's right out on the coast. I'll put a little map up here so you can see where it is. Obviously I'm climbing uphill and out of breath. But yeah, it's definitely going to be quieter. I'm not going to have to ride through the city or anything like that. And finding a camping spot tonight, that's pretty close by, should be doable. It's like 230 metres of climbing in, what, 11 kilometres, so... It's my own fault, as always. I have not packed an evening meal because I have a friend who lives out in East Lothian, Alan, and he is gonna hopefully come out and meet me and he said he might bring some fish and chips. Good morning. How are we all? Oh, okay. Either I can't read the forecast. No, do you know what? I can't read the forecast. I'm not a moron. The forecast in Scotland, it doesn't mean anything. It, it's a lie. They just, they make it up. They pick the little, the little symbols for sun, cloud, rain. They just pick them out of a hat in the morning, throw them up on their website. It's a sham, it's a lie. I'm gonna get wet again. Okay, it stopped raining. I don't know what I was moaning about. I got bits of road like this. Yeah! I have planned some off-road sections. Coming up in about seven or eight miles, I think, so I've got a little bit of road yet. Should make all right time. The final half of this ride looks, well, downhill and flat according to Kamut, so I'll settle for that. Okay, so I've stopped for half a sandwich. It's not too windy, it's only windy when you're riding, but if you ride a bike, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But, and without going into some kind of sob story, I thought I would just harp back to the kind of reason I started these trips and why I took up bike packing and had to kind of give up all the road riding I was doing. Because, like at home we got some things going on, so we're having to move house and things with my work are all up in the air and I'm not really sure if I'm staying or if I'm going and things like that. So there's a lot of, a lot of decisions to be made and a lot of stress that goes with all of those things. But, without going into too much detail, these trips, getting out on your bike in general, it just, yeah, it allows me to reset and have a little bit of thinking time and try and clear the head and the exercise is just good for me. Whatever exercise does for my body, it's good. Good for my, good for my little brain. So, if you have got things going on, it could be completely different things to me, but if there is stuff going on and maybe life feels a little bit heavy now and again, I'm not saying you need to go camping and bike packing and cycle over some of the stupid paths that I end up on, but if you've got a bike, go jump on it, go spin the legs for an hour, suck in some fresh air, get out and see some of the some of the beautiful views that you've got around you. And yeah, um, you'll feel better for it, I promise. But for now, I'm gonna carry on eating my sandwich and then I'm gonna get back on the road. <laughs> I don't know what to say anymore. The forecast isn't even close to this, but I'm doing my, my favorite thing, I'm riding my bike. Not only am I riding my bike, I'm riding my bike in the rain, up a hill. I'm going to keep going this way. This hill's going to finish soon, I think. Okay, I've stopped. I've got an important update. Just spoken to Alan. Fish and chips is the call. I've told him plenty of salt and vinegar, so hopefully he remembers that. Uh, he did say potentially a Chinese, but fish and chips was the, was the winner. It's about 35, 40-ish miles to go. The rain is going to clear off. I'm staying positive. It doesn't matter. 
It stops at the skin. I got fish and chips at the end. Time to shut up, time to keep pedaling. Let's do it. Okay, GoPro on. About to hit the busy road. Can't say I'm looking forward to it. Let's hope everybody's nice. I've got my lights on, as usual. So, let's go for it. Gap's there. I've slowed this clip down here because I try and be nice to the cars and, you know, try and be as friendly as I can to encourage cooperative use of the road. So here, I put my arm out because I'm going to take the next junction, okay? So there goes my arm. But the junction is still a fair way away and I can see that after the, after the van that's coming towards me, there's going to be plenty of time for the car to get past. So whilst I've got my arm out, I change my mind and I wave the car through. And then I'm just waiting to see if they take it. They do, I get a little wave from the passenger, give them the thumbs up, and then once they've passed, another little shoulder check there, and I put my arm back out to go and take my junction. So, just little things, try and keep everyone happy. Well, this is no joke. This is steep. Might have to get out the saddle here, stretch the legs. Bloody hell. <sighs> I dread to think what the gradient on the inside of that corner was. Why is it always cows? Oh man. Okay. Oh, come on. Go the other way. Don't look at me like that. We're going to have a standoff. You're bigger. Oh, yes. I used my intimidating face. Please go a bit further than that. I'm not going to lie, I'm a bit nervous. They're just very big. Let's get the hell out of here. Right, I don't want to talk too soon. I thought this path was going to be off-road, but as you can see, it's actually not a bad road. We're going that way. There's a wind farm right over there. I think I passed through that wind farm. It could even be as long ago as February out to Hope's Reservoir. I cycled right through the middle of it. And those things make some noise when you're up close. So yeah, if you've not checked that episode out, go and check out February, it was bloody freezing. We're going downhill, and the mapping says that we're going downhill for quite a while, and then it's flat, so result, let's do it. I was going downhill, and it was great, but the road did not last for long. So I've just passed through this farm. I've come to my first, my first gate of the day, which is, uh, Pretty standard for my trips. Let's uh, let's hit the gravel. <sighs> There's just cows everywhere. I don't know if you can see this here. Let's just say, in memory of Sub Lieutenant Owen Burgess Norwood, a pilot of 892 Hellcat Squadron Fleet Air Arm, who was killed on the 7th of August 1945 during night flying due to hair fog over Drem Airfield. He was forced to attempt a landing on Lammermuir Hills near Brother Shields farm where he crashed. It's nice that there's a little something out here though. So I don't know if you can see that. Footpath to the A68, three and a quarter miles along this. Well, the road turned to a farmyard and the farmyard turned into kind of gravel and then gravelly mud and then just mud. And now, yeah, we're cycling through a field. It is a footpath, it is marked. I don't think it's used very much, so I'm just out here on my own. It's pretty peaceful. It's definitely got a bit warmer. The wind's died down and the rain's away, so I'm enjoying myself a little bit more now. That is a lot of geese. That's even more geese. There is thousands and thousands of geese up here. Like, I'm sure you can see them. You might be able to hear them. But anyway, the reason I stopped, because I can see water. Now, my geography is not great, but going on the shape of it, how am I going to try and point at this? Over here somewhere? I think that's North Berwick. Hopefully these don't fly over me and, you know, they say it's good luck, but you can keep your luck. This, this is going to be fun. We're going left and then right, so we're not on this for very long at all. Okay, we've had some good bits of road lately. Look at this. A 
I'm in a place called Humby. There's a nice cafe, I've been to it before. I want to say it was February again with Sonny and the boys. We stopped here for some breakfast. But yeah, it was a very welcome stop. I've got myself a cup of coffee and this cake looks awesome. It is like chocolate, coconut and strawberry something or other. There is more than this, it's just snapped in half. So I'm going to tuck into this bit of energy and then jump back on the bike. But so far, since we came off the, uh, the gravel, it's been lots of downhill, flat, very smooth roads. So long may that continue. Right, I just stopped at the, the cafe in Humby and these three gentlemen, we've got Mike, Andy and Paul right here. And you're not going to believe me, but is it Mike here? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Mike came out of the cafe and was like, do you have a YouTube channel? So yeah, he's the first person in the world and I've not paid him who actually recognised me from YouTube. So it was nice to bump into you. Enjoy the rest of your ride. Well, being recognised in public, that's a first. So that was nice. At least somebody's watching. Um, and it feels like the sun might be coming out, which is really nice. It's a little bit warmer. The roads are flat, smooth. I feel like I'm flying along here. So had a little update from another friend, Sonny. And if you've watched, you all know Sonny from my other trips. He might come out and join me tonight, but plans are kind of up in the air. So no promises, don't get too excited. Well, we're really eating up the miles now. Such a massive difference this side of like the East Coast side. I know I'm East Coast in general, but when you're on the bike. Such a massive difference when you, once you get towards the coast. Everything's just nice and flowing. Average speed's up, weather's better. I don't wanna say my mood was bad, but obviously that increases your mood, but look at this. Downhill, straight, smooth. What's that to love? There's a bridge and it's pretty narrow. Am I gonna have a go at it? Of course I am. Well, look at that. Very nice. Where am I going though? Well, I'm on another beautiful back road in East Lothian. Latest update, Alan's coming. Fish and chips is happening. Sunny, I wanna say it's like an 80% yes right now from the messages I've been getting. I don't think he's cycling out. I think he's just gonna drive out and maybe have a night camping or something like that. But still, it'll be good to see him. Nice to have a bit of company as well. A few little uh, plans changed on the fly, but it's nice, mix it up a little bit. Out in the middle of nowhere, like usual, and <laughs> came across a group of people changing a flat tire. So I thought I'll stop, see if I can help say hello. And I bumped into Tyler. I'm gonna let Tyler tell you a little bit about his trip. So I'll shut up and turn the camera around. All right, guys, my name is Tyler. Uh, I started with my girlfriend, Sarah, over there from Paris. This is day 27 of our trip. We started in Paris, I'd say about 1400 kilometers in. We're heading to Dublin as like a first destination. And then that's part of the starting point of a worldwide journey. So first Dublin or the west coast of Ireland more specifically. Then the next checkpoint, Istanbul, Turkey. And then over to Ho Chi Minh. I've got to jump in for a second here because it makes my little overnight trips look pathetic <laughs> now. <laughs> it might not all be bike. Uh, this little $70 go sport bike has been a bit of a disaster so far. But it's angels like Jack and a couple other people that helped me out with this spare uh, and getting the thing changed. It might be walking, it might be scootering, who knows. Just who whatever knows. it takes to get there, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Last nice. big trip was... Indiana to Patagonia and that was kayak sail bike walk so you just never know what it's gonna Sounds be. Sounds good making me jealous. Yeah. Making yeah. me jealous. And how are you finding For it sure. Sarah? Oh good hard but good yeah. first time on the bike. Yeah. yeah. Was mostly yeah. backpacking before so. I'll shut up and let these lovely people get on their way but something different you never know who you're gonna meet so I'll clear off but yeah it was very nice to meet you. It's good to meet you too. Well that was nice. Met some really nice people today. They are on a bit of an epic adventure. I'm gonna do some more epic adventures next year. Maybe not quite as epic as that, but they are gonna be multi-day things. I've got some plans. I keep saying this, but you're just gonna to have to stick around and watch this space. So I remember on the mall in Derley with all the geese, and I pointed at a hill. Turns out I was right, because there it is. Okay, I just wanna take a second. I've had a great bike ride. The last 70%, the weather's been great. 
stopped for a nice bit of cake and a coffee, met some nice people at the cafe, met obviously Tyler and Sarah on the way out. It's just been one of those days where, yeah, a few things have like gone the right way, just a few chance encounters. Yeah, I don't know how to explain it. If you do this kind of stuff and you meet similar minded people, it's nice to have a chit chat and share some stories and yeah, sometimes I think I'm mad out here, especially in the winter, but there's other people doing it. There's nothing special about me. Anyone can do it. If you want to give it a go, go and watch all my review videos. Buy yourself some gear. Go and explore, because look. Middle of nowhere. It's brilliant. Oh, I can't wait for my fish and chips. Alan, if you're watching this back, mate. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I believe Tantalan Castle. Right, I'm on the hunt for somewhere to camp. Um, this field next to me looks a little bit rough, which is a shame because look at the view. Not bad at all. I don't want to be enough. You don't want to be? No. Right, okay. So you don't want to be the fish and chip bringer? <laughs> That's Berwick Law. There, there. Um, yeah, I've kind of ended up camping at the side of a field because there wasn't really many suitable spots. I really wanted a view of the, the sea, but it just wasn't happening. Not with the, like, the state of the fields, they'd all been cut and it's all kind of sharp like this and it would have ruined the tent and been messy so got my little setup there. Alan's turned up, he doesn't want to be on the camera for some reason but he's bought fish and chips and some chairs so yeah living in luxury for the, for this evening. Sonny is on his way by the way so uh, there's going to be three of us so it's going to be yeah it's going to be a nice couple of hours I think it's something something I wouldn't usually get so I'm going to get stuck into some fish and chips. Look who's arrived, the main man Sonny's turned up, he's got his tent up it's gonna be a good episode. It is, it's so always good when he's here. He brings in the viewers. So I'm gonna get changed finally because I'm still in my bibs, which is like Sonny said, criminal. So uh, let's get changed and then we can uh, chill out for the night. Sonny's brought some chocolate and some shortbread, which apparently was only £1.25 for a massive box. Shout out to Tesco. Other supermarkets are available. Good morning, everybody. As always, looking pretty rough because that's how I look in the mornings. But had a good night's sleep. It wasn't too cold. The rain came on. What time, Sonny? About eight o'clock? Yeah, bit before? Yeah. It started raining and it kept on raining and it got heavier and heavier and heavier. So we stood under the trees for a little bit trying to dodge it, but there was no dodging it. It got pretty torrential. So we climbed in nice and early. Okay, it's that time of the morning. It's time for a brew. And we're going with coffee from The Brew Company. Really lightweight, packable coffee for bike packers, backpackers all of those kind of people. They weigh about 20 or 30 grams and they're really thin, almost like a dehydrated meal. If you're interested in something like that because you like your coffee and want something a bit bit nicer in the morning, then head across to the Brew Company website, use the code THEBIKEPACKINGDAD, all one word, no spaces, you'll get 10% off your order. Right, that's it, time for a brew. It's time to start getting packed away. Sonny's just left, emptying out the tent. Sonny brought these last night and he forgot to take them home with him, so. Sonny, when you get around to watching this, thank you. It says share bag, but nah, I don't think so. The bike is packed up. I think I've got everything, as always. Leave no trace. There you go. Don't leave anything behind. Don't leave your rubbish. I've got about two miles to the castle. It's half past nine in the morning. I will see you when we get to Tantalan Castle. Let's get on with it. Tantalan Castle. I'm going to head down the driveway, find Alistair, who's going to be my tour guide. And we're going to get a look around the castle and yeah, let's learn a little bit about it. It's definitely not as big as Edinburgh. It's not going to be as busy, but so far, can you bike pack to Tantalan Castle? Pretty easily, I would say. Easier than Edinburgh Castle. If there's just a couple of you, even, well, even three or four of you, you can find somewhere to peel off and camp quite easily. This is Alistair. He's going to be our guide around the castle, which you can see in the background. The castle was built between 1350 and 1370 by William first Earl of Douglas. Um, it was his nephew that had the castle built. He had been living in France um, because the Scottish court had had to flee uh, during the Second Wars of Independence. The Douglas family became so uh, powerful that the, um, the kings of Scotland uh, eventually decided to deal with them. Uh, the family here were known as the Red Douglas, the ones through the west were still called the Black Douglas. They first dealt with the Black Douglas at a dinner in Stirling Castle 
when they had them uh, killed. Um, and then they, they came here to deal with the Red Douglases. The castle was destroyed by Oliver Cromwell. Um, he had fought a battle, the Battle of Dunbar in 1650, just to the south of here. Um, and then in 1651, he came up here with 3,000 troops. Um, there were only 91 people defending the castle. He destroyed the two towers that you can see um, on either end of the castle. I have massively increased my knowledge in those few minutes because I didn't really know much about Tantalan Castle at all. And I thought, I always think this when I come out, I'm like, I could do some Googling and find out, but it's nice to hear it from someone who is an expert instead of just reading Wikipedia, so. Well, yeah. How many visitors would you say you get per year here? Just under 50,000. Oh, that's pretty good. A little bit different, obviously. It's a bit further out the way and not quite as big and it's not in the city centre and things, but on my last trip, if you've not checked that out, I'll put a little link up now. Um, 8,000 a day was the limit for Edinburgh Castle and you can't buy tickets on the door. It's all online bookings and things like that. Are you able to just turn up here and yes. it's obviously a bit quiet so you can get a ticket when you turn up? Yeah, you can do it online or um, just turn up. Okay, perfect. The outer defences here were added in the 16th century. So there was a large gate underneath the archway there. Um, if you look at the wall there, um, it has holes for musket fire whereas the original castle um, is 14th century and at that time it was still bows and arrows so um, they have arrow slits in the castle wall. So I was just saying to Alistair there, there's, there's worse jobs to have especially on a, a morning like this. Are you saying you were doing this for 15 years? Yeah. Yeah? But yeah, this is a... It's not a bad front door is it? So we have a well it's 32 meters deep please don't drop my camera um you can't no you can't see the bottom you can hear the echo though you can see there's barriers that run all the way along the top so i was just asking if we can go up there and we can so i'm quite looking forward to going looking at the views from up there right we're going up so where does this take us alistair up to the battlements okay and on my right here would this be i'm going to take a guess would this be one of the archer windows <laughs> That we were talking about? Yes. Yes. Um, and there's seating as well. Okay. Gotta watch your head in some places. Like, I think you're taller than me, but <laughs> the, in, the initial. Yeah, I, have to, I have to duck down at times. Yeah. It's good that you can still get to these kind of places because a lot of places they're all closed off. Just for people who might want to visit, whether it's on bike or on car or however they get here, what times of the year are you open and kind of opening times and things? In the summer, it's 9.30 till 5.30 and then in the winter it's 10 till 4. So this is one of the towers that when Cromwell attacked this one got destroyed and the one on the other side, the one in the middle not so much because um, they couldn't really get a clean shot at it because there, there was an outer wall in the way. But on the headland over there uh, that's where he set up his artillery and obviously had a clean shot at the tower which is why most of it no longer exists but I love this here. You see the the leftover of the steps there. That's pretty cool. But Alistair's patiently waiting for me and we are going to go up to the top and have a little look. But yeah, the views are spectacular. Obviously, we've still got Bass Rock and just behind that's the Isle of May. Um, and Alistair was saying they get a lot of puffins there through, I think he said, June and July. And what I did learn, which was pretty cool, baby puffins are called pufflings. You said they were here for 12 days when Cromwell attacked? Yes. Yeah. Um, I don't fancy being attacked for a day, never mind 12. And what was, did you say there was 91 people defending? Only 91 people defending. And 3,000 on the outside. So the numbers were slightly skewed. Yes. <laughs> yeah. At our neighbouring castle at Belton, they surrendered straight away. Yeah. And because of that, the commanders of the castle um, were executed so you didn't really win either way yeah you either stuck it out and probably got killed or surrendered and got killed anyway yes sounds like a good deal we're gonna go right to the end and soak in this view so this is gin head I was just speaking to Alistair about it and he was saying it's kind of the the birthplace of infrared yes yeah 
the it was a Royal Navy research station and then later became a radar station during the Second World War because the British fleet was quite often kept in the Firth of Forth and because of that um, we had three airfields just to the southwest of here um, so it was an early warning for the um, planes. And apparently somebody has bought that bit of land and the seven buildings over there for 2.8 million pounds so a pretty penny but that was what, four years ago and they've not done anything with it yet so who knows what they'll do but it does look as Alistair said if I, if I can just pan back around here right on the very end it's uh, it's definitely got scope for a, a James Bond villain base 100% so down here it's having a little bit of work done on it just now but this used to be the Great Hall and uh, for convenience I guess the tower here uh, was known as the Douglas Tower and that's where the family would stay so when they were throwing parties or social gatherings or whatever they would refer to them um, you would just yeah you'd leave your house and go straight to the Great Hall and I guess if you would had a few too many it wasn't too far to get home either so yeah not a bad life so we're back on the ground over here was the brew house here was the kitchen and just where my fingers pointing there is the the remnants of the oven and this is the the Great Hall from the other angle we were just up there somewhere looking at it and this was initially servants court as Alistair was saying uh, and then over time they turned it into vaults for storage so as you can see you've got the Douglas Tower that kind of just looks out on all this so so we were just talking about a minute ago saying how how good it is that so much of this is accessible and you can get up the stairs and things like that because there's a lot of places you go to where you you can't go up top because health and safety this and health and safety that um, and Alistair was saying the Victorians are to thank for that because they did a lot of the work when Queen Victoria was coming to visit um, which was nice of them and it's benefiting us now so thank you Victorian people um, but the funny part of this story when Queen Victoria actually turned up uh, you say it was raining it was raining and she didn't bother getting out of the carriage so they did all that work and the only people really benefit from it are us that's the tour of the castle done there's a few bits we couldn't get to like the gun room and they've got a, a replica cannon in there you were saying and the the kind of the Douglas Tower but they're due to be open again in the next well hopefully a couple of weeks two or three weeks so if you plan to visit you might get in there where, where I've not got um, but just to say thanks to Alistair cheers for showing us around and sharing yeah, your knowledge it's been a pleasure um, yeah we've been lucky with the weather we were just saying it's not too windy it's not too cold the sun's still somewhere trying to poke its head out for my bike ride home but for now I'm going to head back down I'm going to have a drink and a little snack before I go and then I'm going to get back on the road but this has been Tantalan Castle it's most definitely bike pack friendly. Loads of places around here to either wild camp, and you were saying there are actual campsites a bit further down the coast? There's Tantalan campsite um, just within um, a mile. Yeah, so a mile away. So if you want somewhere proper to camp that might have more facilities and showers and things like that, you can do that. Or if you prefer to sleep at the edge of a field like I did last night, you can do that also. But for now, I've got to get on the road. I've got about 90 kilometers to go and a lot of climbing. So, cheers Alistair. Thank you. I really enjoyed that. I hope you did too. Just a, a few little facts about the castle. Definitely bike pack friendly. Alistair, if you're watching this, thanks for sharing your knowledge with us. I really enjoyed it. Perks of cycling in the middle of nowhere are you find the wild blackberries. Be rude not to. They're pretty good. Just, just a couple more maybe. Okay, okay. Go and do some cycling, Jack, come on. Oof, that one's a bit tight. So it looks flat, right? Goes on for ages. You think, yes, nice flat bit of road, but false flat. Can we see down here? See that gradient? 1.9, 2-ish percent. Saps the legs, you gotta be careful with stuff like that. It's getting pretty tough now. I've been gradually climbing uphill for about five miles, it kind of like, rolls a little bit and then it's just a steady incline the rain is trying to come in okay i've made the decision to stop and put the jacket on oh we're climbing now geez oh the last mile or so dropped into a little i don't even know if it's big enough to be called a village it's called garveled but of course when you drop down you got to get back out and that's what we've been doing for <laughs> quite a long way now it said slow on the road there it's my only gear right now. 
I just passed that slow sign, came around the corner for a little bit of flat, <laughs> turned straight into this. Ah, uh, right, come on, legs. Had to take the jacket back off. Those hills, you can't lock in that kind of heat. It's roasting. Um, but I got to the top, and there's an, there's like a an abbey here, Nunraw Abbey. Has a little map on it, which I'm going to show you to see how far we've come already and where we've got to go. So, this is Tantalan. So that's where the castle was, that's where I started, and that's Bass Rock out there. But basically we've come across and now we're here. Edinburgh is over here, and I'm heading back, back to the borders over the Lammermuir Hills. So I'm going this way, um, and the borders is down here. It's just the climbing, it's gonna get me. But I've made the executive decision, I'm gonna have half a ham sandwich. road just like that have been my life for like the last three miles little sharp declines into little sharp climbs hey that rhymed at least i think it did my legs and body are pretty tired right now so oh no oh no 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 oh that's all uphill it's a bit like this you just gotta you gotta grit your teeth get in the right headspace and just tell your legs to be quiet. Take a look at that. That is no joke. Oh man, it's out the saddle stuff. I don't know if you can see the trip computer, but 12 and a half, 13, 14, 14 and a half percent. Oh man, this would be tricky on the road bike. Never mind on the uh, the gravel bike with all of my gear. I'm not gonna let this hill beat me. What do you reckon around this corner? Cafe. Oh, hot scone. Hot scone and a cup of coffee. You know it's been steep when two, three percent feels like the flat. This bit of road has been absolutely brutal. It's lumpy between the hard parts. <laughs> so lumpy is hard enough with tired legs, but. There was a, yeah, the wall back there must have been oh, a kilometre, a kilometre and a half long. Must have averaged at least 10%. It was 14, 50% in parts. Out the saddle, just grinding away. But we made it. I'm only 20 miles into my ride. I've got at least 30, at least 30 miles to get home. Well, this is about to get pretty tasty. Even tastier than it already has been, I think. I'm riding on sand. I came off that really lumpy moor road and was flying downhill loving life and then my computer beeped at me and told me i missed the turning so i turned around and it's brought me onto this sandy gravel track which goes oh, let me turn you around up here for a long way even the sheep are looking at me like what are you doing excuse my out of breathness if that's a thing over there i don't know if you can see it that's the gravel track i just came along and the water is where I started. A lot colder just now. I guess that car's showing me uh, where we're going. But yeah, it's definitely a lot colder. So let's keep on spinning the legs. Let's stay warm. So whilst I'm riding through this field, Sonny mentioned last night we should have a look at doing the, the John Muir Way. I need to do a little bit of research into it. I want to say it's about 130, 134 miles or something I think it is from coast to coast in Scotland. So. I'll check that out. It's getting to that time of the ride now where I could do with finding a shop. Oh, I could eat a pasty, a bottle of Coke, maybe some Dr. Pepper, my favourite. So I didn't film it while I was there, but funny story. I'm cycling this back road and then all of a sudden I see a house that I recognise and I'm thinking, how do, how do I recognise this house? My wife's friend's house. And we were there for like a, a dinner party thing not so long ago. And I could see there was cars in the driveway and I was like, I've got to go knock. Like I've got like two sips of water left. The snacks are running low. The pub in the last town that I passed through, West Rother, um, it wasn't open, so I couldn't go in there and fill up the bottles. So I said, like, I'm gonna knock. And sure enough, she was in. So I've got a couple of bottles of water and a couple of little chocolate biscuits to keep me going. CC, if you ever watch this, thank you very much. It's typical. I'm only about six, seven miles from home and the sun's decided to come out properly for the first time all day. I've stopped, I'm going to do my sign off in the sun. It's been a good trip, it's been a really tough day on the bike. Day two was really tough. 
going out the way was all right. There was still a good bit of climbing, I think over a thousand meters, but I think just with it being the first day, you've always got a bit more in the legs. But today's been tough, a lot of type two fun. I'll look back on it and be happy I did it. But home's not far away. This is Liederfoot Viaduct in the Scottish border. So if you're ever in this part of the world, well worth a visit. If for nothing else, you get a good picture of your bike up against the wall here. Um, but yeah, another good trip is Tantallen Castle, bike back and friendly. Yes, I would say probably even a little bit more than Edinburgh Castle. It's a lot quieter. There's loads of places to wild camp. There's proper campsites nearby. Edinburgh Castle, it's a lot bigger, a lot more tourists. Unless you're paying for a B&B or something in the city, you're probably gonna have to ride six, seven miles to get into town if you've managed to find a, a suitable wild camp spot outside of the city. But Tantallen Castle was great. Alistair, if you're watching this, thanks for all your, all your help and giving me the tour around. Beautiful place. Uh, I'm quite jealous of the job you've got. Um, but yeah, for now, I'm going to get on my way. Got to get home, help with the kids. So I'll, uh, I'll see you all in October. Cheers.